Hello everyone, my name is Simon from The Domain. You know, it's been a pretty crazy three or four days for the Halo community. There were so many expectations and it almost seemed like the bench was too high. And now that the trailers are out, multiple trailers, like three of them now, I can safely say that most of my concerns have, have gone away, you know? I am now very confident of Halo's success in November. And you know what? I'm also on holiday right now in Sai Kun, Hong Kong. I don't really have time to edit a video, so I'm going to release my full unedited, unfiltered thoughts and opinions on the campaign, the multiplayer and the multiplayer overview. So here we are, won't you join me? I got a load of notes. I'm going to go through first my E3 predictions, how they actually turned out, and then the campaign, multiplayer and multiplayer overview. So we'll start with the E3 predictions. And I actually had a lot alongside every Halo YouTuber. Like I said, the expectations were so high. So nobody really knew if Halo was going to deliver. I initially predicted that we would get a campaign trailer followed by a very long multiplayer overview, which we kind of did get except 24 hours later. And then I also predicted that the rest of the showcase would go by. And then at the end, we'd get a trailer for the Halo Showtime TV series. I'd say I was like pretty close on the money. I thought that the campaign would get a little more fleshed out from the trailers. We're still very much guessing about what's going on there, but the multiplayer, yeah, we, we got a very good idea about like what BTB 2.0 will be and just the future about, you know, the design and the overall aesthetics of Halo, like the visual direction that, but that Bungie, uh, Bungie now 343 is taking. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just feeling really good about it. So let, let's have a look. I'm going to be referencing my notes a lot. And as I said, this is going to be I hope mostly unedited, just a long thing that you guys can stick your teeth into. Call it an outdoor podcast, if you will. So E3 predictions. Um, we did a very long live stream, about five and a half hours, where we played a load of MCC. We all went through our best predictions. And really, we talked about our, our main concerns. You know, last year, we all know that E3, well, there wasn't really an E3 last year, but still the Halo trailer that came out, it was a little... Uh, buggy and the graphics weren't up to scratch. I personally, you know, I don't play a Halo game for the graphics. I thoroughly enjoyed the trailer regardless. I thought all the right elements were there, all the right key pieces, and I went away last year feeling very, very satisfied. I was uh, very sad when I went online later and found out that people didn't share the same opinion as me. Everyone was very concerned last year, and going into E3 this year, there were just so many predictions. So many things that could honestly go wrong and leave people disappointed. So, yeah, my honest opinion, the, the E3 this year was too short. Um, they did not show enough. Certainly the campaign, it was just another couple of cinematic guessing games. Uh, they really should have given a more long-standing overhaul of the gameplay. Certainly showed way more of Zeta Halo. Like, my favorite part of the trailer was the Zeta Halo overview, but it was so short. It was like 10 seconds long. And then they really should have explained their schedule better. The fact that they had the multiplayer overhaul 24 hours later, it was great, but they didn't announce it at E3, they didn't announce it prior, so everyone was really just, like me personally and anybody watching E3 would have been looking at this whole like hour and a half, what like two hour long E3 presentation with Xbox and Bethesda, and waiting for so much more Halo. I expected 20 minutes and we got like six. So that was initially the disappointing thing, and now we're going to get into what was actually shown in the campaign demo. And to do that, we're gonna switch locations. We've got a lot of nice places to go, and you can see I am just wiping the sweat off my brow right now. So let's go to the next beautiful location. We'll talk about the campaign. All right, campaign, guys. Uh, first of all, I want to send an open love letter to Joseph Staten. Uh, it's just so wonderful to see his face back on the Halo community team and just leading the project. Like, Joseph is back. He is best known for leading Halo 3 ODST. They gave him a wonderful introduction at the beginning of this trailer, and his voice is just so soothing. I love you, Joseph. I love you. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's get into it. Um, first of all, the soundtrack is insane. I've been using the small snippets of Halo Infinite soundtracks we've had so far in loads of my videos, and they're just beautiful. Like, the trailer starts, and it is the best part of the trailer, the panning shot of Zeta Halo showing the Marines in the base, and then that pelican roars past, and then it pans up to see the Master Chief. I, I mean, that the the tra oh, the soundtrack, the soundtrack. The fact that, and I am sad that Marty O'Donnell is not on the project, I really think that he should at least be an advisor on this, but the fact that they've got three art-inspired, uh, what am I calling them, artists, soundtrack artists, recording artists, sound producers, three of those guys, and it, clearly the teamwork it makes the dream work. Like, they are producing some gorgeous, gorgeous music for Halo Infinite. Like, by far my favorite in the franchise, and we've only heard a small amount. But yeah, that panning shot of Zeta Halo. Now, I might make a separate video on this, but my biggest ambition, my biggest dream for Halo Infinite is that Zeta Halo is fully customizable with the Marines that you save and create bases with. Now, my favorite part of reading Halo the Flood, the novel, is that they describe what happens to all of those UNSC forces that leave the Pillar of Autumn. At the beginning of Combat Evolved, all the Marines from the Pillar of Autumn, they crash land on the ring, and they have to basically fend for themselves. The Chief is not really even present, like he's off in the installation with Guilty Spark for most of the campaign. So they really have to do it on their own, and they build Alpha Base, you become hugely attached to all these Marines, and then you're so devastated when they die, and really that's what I want from Halo Infinite. I I want all these marines to have names. I want there to be survival marine camps all over Zeta Halo that you have to build up by saving more marines. Take your Razorback across the ring, rescue platoons, small mission objectives, and then the more that you rescue, the more you can build up these bases, and the more they can provide things for you, like armor upgrades. Like, that's what I want. And to see all of those marines, like, building up this huge base, it, it brought me a lot of of satisfaction like a lot of hopes that my dreams will actually come true and then a guy on Twitter pointed out that you can actually see in that trailer zooming in this little band this like banished camp where some Marines have been taken hostage and you can actually see them like tied up with their armor stripped away which is actually kind of coincidental because mega constructs when they revealed the marine platoon pack there was a marine survivor without any armor so what if you can go to all these banished camps rescue marines get them in your razorback take them back to alpha base and secure like build up your base even more like that's what i want from halo infinite arguably more than anything that and just a gorgeous open exploration of the of the ring you know i want to be able to explore every Everywhere. Easter eggs everywhere, small objectives, cryo pods that have jettisoned from the infinity where you've got to rescue Spartans, like anything like that. I want all of those kind of collectibles. And I think about Breath of the Wild. That's my favorite game of last year. I played it so much last year. When you start Breath of the Wild, you have to face Ganon. But everything else you do is completely up to you. That's what I want from Zeta Halo. You crash land on there. There is an objective to kill Atriox or Ecrium, but everything else you do is completely up to you. So as I said before, the trailer doesn't really show that much in terms of new information. It was cool to see Zeta Halo, but then when you go to the Master Chief, Maybe him floating through space is not actually part of the campaign. Maybe it's just a fake cutscene. It's not very clear, but one of them has to be fake. The end of Discover Hope has him jumping out as the banished have like scanned the pelican, but then this one has everyone dead. So which is it? I don't really know, but it's still gorgeous. I love how the implant on the back of his neck, the neural interface, lights up green when Brohammer's talking. I also love Brohammer. He is just so wonderful. He is like my absolute favorite. And then Chief going through space is beautiful. He cradles a marine. He explodes a fusion coil. He's like, ah, oh, the way he takes a, an assault rifle out of the marine cockpit, it shows a very dark take on the game and then he grapple shots he crashes into the banished base assumingly and then it cuts to cortana 2.0 now cortana 2.0 when i was watching this trailer i really enjoyed her but i was like oh man the community's not gonna like that the chiefs with a new cortana actually it seems like people really like her like everybody online is very positive about it which is great to see and that is another thing that is just so wonderful about the last 48 hours 
the whole stance on the Halo community has changed, you know? I saw a very cool tweet that said, people are saying Halo's back, Halo never left, you did. And I like that. Like, a lot of people abandoned the franchise in the last year, and they're coming back in waves. It's the number one trending video on YouTube, like, Halo's back, baby. Halo never really left, but it's still great to see it succeeding right now. And what was I even talking about? That's that. <laughs> I went off topic. Um, yeah, Cortana. Where is Cortana? Cortana 2.0? Did the Didact take her? Uh, also, the soundtrack's beautiful. That's my notes. Um, yeah, the new Cortana 2.0 is called The Weapon, supposedly. She's a dumb AI, maybe. And she's here to stop Cortana, but Cortana's gone, but Chief doesn't know, so where's Cortana? Maybe the Didact took her? I would like to think that it's all Mendison bias. There's been so many things that have happened in the Halo canon that are unexplained. The Chief arriving on Requiem, even though he was in just cryosleep. Spirit of Fire arriving at the Ark, even though they had no sl slip space drive. Slip space drive, yeah. All of these things, there are universal strings pulling all these characters together. And maybe Cortana has been taken by Mendison Baez, and it's all gonna come full circle on Zeta Halo. Just hear me out, all coming around full circle. Didn't tell me much, I really wish they'd showed more of the campaign, and I hope that there's gonna be some kind of like, Halo presentation in the next month. But more I was looking to find out how explorable Zeta Halo is. We don't really know, so that's all for campaign for now. They kind of, yeah, just teased us and messed us around a bit. Though we do have more information about Cortana 2.0. It really makes me think what the fate of Cortana is and what part she's going to play in this game. But only time will tell. See you at the third location. <laughs> We're going to talk about multiplayer. Hey. <laughs> multiplayer, multiplayer. Now that's the big que <laughs> question. No. Multiplayer, multiplayer. Now, that's the big talking point. Interestingly, I did a poll recently on my YouTube channel. Almost everybody said that campaign is the most important thing to them, yet multiplayer is where you spend the large majority of your time. So here we are talking about multiplayer because really it has been a turbulent time. In my opinion, Halo 3 was the pinnacle of multiplayer. Halo Reach was exceptional. And then Halo 4 and 5, guess what? They were very good. I I really, really like Halo 4 multiplayer. Halo 5 Guardians multiplayer was not entirely my cup of tea, but I get where they were coming from. Clearly, a lot of people don't believe the same I do, or they don't think the same I do. They don't like Halo 5 multiplayer that much at all. So, it's gonna be interesting, because we still don't know exactly what's been scrapped. I wanna know, I'm falling over here, I'm like crouching on some, some, god, there's so many bugs. I wanna know, how many of the Spartan abilities are still in the game. We haven't seen Ground Pound or Spartan Charge, but they could still be there. Yeah, but, but really we can see how much has been scrapped. And we can see, number one, the art style. Oh my god, the art style. We've got my boy CQB and ODST is back. Spartan Soldier looks incredible. It was always one of my favorites in Halo 4. All of these Spartans look fantastic like they really do we even have a meal in the game i mean my goodness and the level of customization before we say anything else just looks like out of this world apparently millions of combinations you can have cybernetic arms and legs like the scale of this is exceptional just extraordinary now let's talk about bit by bit what i noticed from the trailer what i thought really stood out <laughs> i'm glad the sun's gone away for a second that's at least nice i just don't like these cocky UNSC, like, officers. I, I get it, like, you you're in the Marine Corps, it makes sense, but, like, it seemed so, like, in your face in the trailer, and I hope she, like, I don't know what the name of this character is, but I hope she's more fleshed out in the future. Spartan Palmer, I think she just wasn't liked by people because she was just too aggressive and arrogant and not, like, humanized at all, so I really hope they do a lot to, yeah, humanize this character, but it sort of looks okay. I love the academy. I love that you can train your Spartan. I love that you can use bots. That's just exceptional. And then the Chopper, the Wraith, and the Banshee, they all look 
insane in like banished design the wasp also looks really great it's interesting that the wasp is something that was kept from warzone dlc it's cool that that's now like a staple vehicle and it makes sense because these big team battle 2.0s a little wasp zipping about is really dope i hope that this wasp has more shield strength because the wasp in halo 5 could die from like being coughed on too hard so i'm really hoping they improve and balance out the vehicles a bit more what else have we got um so many weapons the needler and the bulldog shotgun look really great nice and weighty the gravity hammer oh my god the way it slams down on the floor that had me in chills every time i love weapons on the wall that you can pick up that's really nice and then we've got a load of deployable equipment now i said before halo 3 is the pinnacle of multiplayer i 100 will defend that the great thing about halo 3 was weapon or like uh, equipment pickups it's great that they've come back now apparently if you're killed while having an unused pickup the next player can pick that up and use it so that's great we have the threat sensor grapple shot repulsor and drop wall being showed in the trailer they're not game breaking i think the problem with spartan abilities in the past is like just cheap and easy kills like the armor lock is just the worst thing absolutely the worst i don't think any of these are that bad the repulsor seems like a bit of a cheap kill it would be cool if you can like repel grenades or repel like rocket launchers that would be really dope so let's see where that goes Okay, what do we got? Uh, pickups, yeah, pickups are great. Uh, maybe there's foreigner weapons. I'm just like moving my legs a bit. I'm <laughs> losing, but there's too much, there's not enough blood circulating. That's the thing. All right, so foreigner weapons, they look like they're returning. There's a really cool new sniper rifle. The AI assist feature looks dope. And then the skewer is massive. Like, I didn't think it would be that huge. It looks like a Spartan can barely hold it and it's used in a very cool way. Uh, the grapple shot on a hawk is awesome. Next page, and then the Ragnarok remake looks insane. I would love a load of really classic Halo maps to be remade. That's what I'm all about. Give me a new, give me a new Guardian. That's what I want. Guardian's my all-time favorite. The Pelican dropping a Banshee in seems insane. Seems like they're going down like the Halo 4 Ordnance route, which I always enjoyed. I'm not mad about that at all. Haul ass at your earliest convenience. I really hope these AIs have like some real attitude to them. They can say a lot of like really sassy comments the skull uh yeah the skull has such weight to it and he holds it like hamlet the samurai spartan is i think arguably twitter's favorite thing about all of the last 48 hours it looks just outrageous the fact that we have a new hayabusa variant-esque thing is just it's just beautiful and apparently you can unlock it for free in the game there's also the avery j johnson academy of military side okay let me let me backtrack on one of the maps, you can see that there is an Avery J. Johnson Military of... Academy of Military Science. Avery J. Johnson Academy of Military Science. I got it. Apparently, that's in the game. That's a really dope uh, nod to Avery Johnson. And yeah, that's all of my notes for the multiplayer trailer. The last thing we're going to go into today is the multiplayer overview, which... Yeah, that's that's just more multiplayer, fleshed out multiplayer. Let's go. Let's go talk about that. The sun came out for a little second, and I got nervous, but it's gone back back behind the cloud. Let's go find a new film set. So the Xbox and Bethesda presentation came to an end, and people were very happy with what they saw, but not really satisfied because although the art direction was quality, the weapons seemed to be excellent. Like everything was there. We just didn't see enough, and we were also expecting a lot more because it had been a full year, and Xbox would have given Halo as much time as they wanted at the presentation, so it was a bit strange that they didn't show more, and I was a little bit worried, thinking, well, is there not more? Like, is there not more you can be showing us right now, or is everything still in alpha stage? But no, I, I don't think so. Now that the multiplayer overview is out of the way, my my thoughts uh, are pretty pretty good. <laughs> the sun, oh the sun, man, the sun is outrageous. Um, okay, so let's let's get on with this, so I can get out of the sun and get get myself a nice Coca Cola. So multiplayer overview. First of all, the dope new three four three in images, three four three industries logo. The new logo is excellent. I really like it. That's quality. And also shout out to the multiplayer overview being. Yeah, 
Shout out to the multiplayer overview being number one on trending right now. That's a big win for 343. I'm very happy for them. Uh, to this one, I'm a cheating a little bit. I took a lot of inspiration from Mint Blitz. I would tell you all to go subscribe, but I'm sure you already are. He did a little breakdown of all the key points from this overview, and I'm kind of going to steal that list and expand on it more. The thing that stood out to me the most was the fact that vehicles take damage and perform differently or lose parts of their vehicle like maybe the wheels if they got shot in different locations hello plane so that's really interesting the fact that you can shoot the wheel or the tire off a warthog and then it's sort of rolling is really excellent i love that so vehicle damage that's quality i hope it's for all the vehicles let's go through the list first of all individual armor pieces that is outrageous the sheer amount of things you can do to your spartan it blows me away like, they promised reach level customization, and it's clear they're gonna deliver 10 times more than reach, so I'm hyped for that. One of the things I'm hoping for is that the Spartans... First of all, getting Spartans are not randomized. I don't think they will be, but in Hail 5 Guardians, that was the worst thing for me. I'm hoping that you can purchase them with points, like you can do on MCC, and they said a lot about seasonal updates, so I'm hoping that the more seasons come out, the more, like, themes there'll be, the more you can unlock. I wonder also how much the camera is picking up the beads of sweat running down my face. This is, uh, ugh. I never record in the sun for this reason alone. Hong Kong is a hot place. Right, individual armor pieces looks outrageous. I'm all about it. And I'm all about, like, literally the designs of my Spartans look exactly like I want from 3 and Reach. So, shout out to MCC and probably inspiring a lot of this. 343, you are killing it. You can customize your own AI. You can choose your own AI for the game. It'll help you tactically throughout multiplayer. I'm really hoping for like a load of old favorites like Gunnery Sergeant Edward Book being able to do the narration for you. I'm also hoping for a grunt, like a Victor the Grunt commentator would be really fun. Maybe even a brute, like Ecrium, like ordering you forward. That'd be so dope. So customizing your AIs is really cool. I'm hoping you can also give them names, change like the pitches and frequencies and speeds of the voices. So you can like really make it your own. It seems like customization is like the core of Halo Infinite. The Academy seems like a really good feature. The fact that you can train and get ready for multiplayer seems like a lot of games are doing that right now, especially Battle Royales. So I love the fact that you'll be able to train with bots and also bots. You can add bots into custom games, which is just like everything. Oh man, I cannot tell you how many times I've seen a request for that just throughout my Halo journey, it's like been one of the number one community requests. Especially when like we're doing Halo custom games on MCC, we've got 16 players and then one drops out and you can't do team battles because you can't have it unbalanced, so you just have to go to free for all. So the fact that you can add bots in, that's a, that's a godsend. If they are going down this direction, I wouldn't be surprised if you can add bots into Forge, which is like, oh man. If you can add Covenant bots into Forge, oh man, oh man. Also, playable elites, where are they? We need playable elites. The fact that this is like a legacy game, I, I, I feel like they're gonna add playable elites eventually. Are you doing okay, Peggy? <laughs> She's like squatted over holding the tripod. All right, all right, I'll get on with it. I'll get on with it. Really cool that you can pick up a power-up, choose when to use it, it's not automatic, and then if you get killed, someone else can pick it up. It's exactly like Halo 3, they got it spot on. No, yeah, no, oh man, no red versus blue. That hits even after reading it. Yeah, they got rid of red versus blue. Apparently you can just choose your own colors now, which... It's definitely something that they could just toggle in the future. I wouldn't be surprised if they add it later on. But apparently, when you're looking down a scope or you see an enemy coming, they'll be highlighted as red even though they've got their own set colors. To me, that's disappointing. I, I really don't like that. Um, I love my red versus blue, and your colors are for free-for-all, and free-for-all alone, but I guess that's where armor coatings come in, and that is probably the most negative part of the game so far. Armor coatings, and the loss of red versus blue, the loss of, like, that team element. I don't know, I won't feel like I'm on a team the same. And I, I don't know, just, like, reflexes, you know? I if I'm, like, turning around and I see an enemy, will I just shoot it even though it's a teammate because it's not 
inherently my color. Like when I start a game, the first 10 seconds, I'm like, did I, oh, I knocked my drink. The first 10 seconds when I start a game, I'm memorizing what color my team is so I can instantly kill someone if I see them just from reflex, you know? Like if I've got rockets, I'll turn around and if I see a red member or blue member if I'm on red team, I'll shoot them immediately. So I'm hoping 343 is taking that into account. I'm really hoping that red versus blue does make a return. I don't like that at all, but we'll see how that plays out, I guess. Um, F in the chat for red versus blue. <laughs> I don't know. All right, and then apparently you can customize your Spartan on Halo Waypoint, even on the mobile app. I think it'll lay into like way more of a personal approach to your Spartan, really feeling like this is your Spartan. I've seen some people rumoring that the fact that they're doing this is gonna lead into the Master Chief dying at the Halo end of Halo Infinite, and then like your Spartan being the next campaign hero. I don't think they'll do it because the Chief is just too sacred, but even if they do like, you know, a spin-off game, I could see them having you uh, with your own customized Spartan, like Halo Reach, basically. There's a couple of screenshots on Twitter I wanted to point out. One of them is comparing the assault rifle from 2020 to 21. That's why you delay a game for a year. It looks so much better. And then comparing Halo 5 Spartans to Halo Infinite Spartans. Good Lord, is that a better change? All right, last page of my notes, boys. Right. It looks very easy to kill people in this game. It looks like you can actually get kills very easily. It looks like the weapons deal a ton of damage and most things like seem to be instant kills, to be honest. The gravity hammer seems to have such a range of effect. So I'm gonna have to see how they balance that kind of stuff. I don't mind quick kills. I know that was like a big part of Halo 5 Guardians. It was like competitive play where you could get kills very quickly. I'm not a big fan of it, but Again, we'll see. I'm not gonna complain about these things that can be tweaked. Grapple shot. You can grab weapons with it. You can board wasps. It almost seems like it's one of the integral features of the game. I'm wondering how the gameplay will play if you don't have the grapple shot, and also how frequently the grapple shot will be laid out around the map. I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a lot of them around the map. It's such an advertised feature and it seems so fun. I I think there'll be a few, uh, like, every couple of minutes spawning. Will there be ground pound? Will there be Spartan charge? Will there be things like armor lock or bubble shields? I really hope the bubble shield makes a return, but they've got the drop wall, so maybe that's the new bubble shield. And then the Razorback looks just outstanding. The fact that you can load ordnance onto the back of it, you can put marines in, get your gear, get your Spartans, get your flag in there. It looks like the perfect weapon, the perfect vehicle to take into Big Team Battle 2.0, which is now 24 players, which is so great. I cannot wait for 24 player BTB. That's so sick. And the last note I have for today is that the armor hall looks amazing. They've not really got into detail yet, but apparently you can customize all of your weapons, customize the vehicles. Just, I, I cannot wait to see what they do. Like, clearly they've been practicing all of this. They've been experimenting with customization in MCC, and a load of weapon customization was in Halo 5 Guardians, so we'll see what happens there. A lot of this is, you know, we'll see what happens, but that's, that's what happens when you, you get the first trailer, you know? You, it's all speculation. Ah, <sighs> anyway, this has been about 30 minutes of, uh, of, of pure, pure Simon chatter. I hope you enjoyed this unedited style. Uh, it's really all I could do while I was on holiday and I really wanted to get like everything out. I wanted to talk about everything that was on my mind. I want to know, I want the comments down below filled with all of your thoughts and opinions on where Halo's going. Rate, you know what, rate out of 10 what you think of that presentation. Give it a rating out of 10. Did it exceed expectations? That'd be a 10. Was it very low expectations? That'd be a one. Don't give it a zero. Come on, be fair. Don't don't be mean. Don't be mean to Halo Infinite. It looks like everything, the pieces are all fitting together. And honestly, I'm going to lay back for a while and just bask in the glory that people are in the Halo community again. We're number one trending on YouTube and everybody seems to have come back saying, you know what, uh, who, who cares about Halo 5 Guardians? It's, it's in the past. Halo 5 what? No, this is Halo Infinite, baby. All right, I'm going to go get myself a, a cheeseburger and mop myself down because this has been a very sweaty affair. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Please do make sure to check out all the other E3 kind of content we've been pushing out. We did a diorama that showcased the Master Chief and his new Cortana 2.0. Uh, that was a beautiful thing from Bam Bam Productions. And then I also made a couple of edits and my big live stream and so much more is coming out soon. I also just released a couple of hours ago my 
compilation of every single Halo Infinite trailer so far. So if you want to get up to date, watch a load. There'll be some I guarantee you've not watched before. Go check that out. And uh, yeah, Domain signing off. Gah, you're gonna go, gonna go grab a beer. Later, folks. Also, drivable forklift in Halo Infinite or we riot.